Welcome everyone to this post-WrestleMania edition of After the Bell. I am Jeff Meacham. Thank you all for watching today. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot. I'm just going to get right into the questions. Let's just have at it. First one comes from Twitter from George Kushney. Hey Jeff, saw the dad's reaction to Mania. Damn, I thought I was pissed. Hope you're calmer now. Pretty much, yeah. Question for the show. Was Brian and Ryder doing jobs last night a sign of a big F you to the IWC for WWE? Thanks, man. Hopefully see you at SummerSlam. Um, maybe. You know, it wouldn't surprise me. But, um, Brian losing was horseshit. It was ridiculous. The way he, not, not a lot of losing, but the way he lost. And Zach jobbing, guys got jobs sometimes, guys. <laughs> got to lose sometimes. You can't just, you know, be the great internet hero all the time. He's going to lose every now and then. But, um, Brian losing in 18 seconds was horrid. And I, I, I don't understand that at all. I'll never understand that one, ever. This is from Ian Dunn. Jeff, I'm a fan from the old days. Can you see the likes of Judy Martin, Leilani Kai, Miss Elizabeth, and Jacqueline the WWE Hall of Fame one day? Miss Elizabeth, yes. The rest of them... Maybe, but unlikely. Uh, maybe Jacqueline, but I, you know, I, even that's hard for me to say. But definitely Miss Elizabeth. She'll definitely be in the Hall of Fame one day. No question about that. Should have been this year with Randy. Jeff, if you own WWE, who would you get rid of and who would you bring into the WWE? I will get to that last, Andrew. Andrew Duggan, I will get to that. Thank you, sir. Another one from Ian Dunn. Now the Undertaker is 20-0. Can you see him in the Hall of Fame next year? And if so, who should go in with him? Love your shows. They are the best. Uh, talk about this Undertaker um, last show, I believe, about going to the Hall of Fame. I don't know who's going to go in with him next year. It could be any number of people. But the guys that should induct him are either Paul Bear or Kane or Vince McMahon. Uh, let's see. Wayne Martin Mar 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 Martinsky. Mar 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 Martinsky. Who do you think is the most underused or misused on WWE right now? And what would WWE have to do to make the U.S. IC titles mean something? I mean, Ziggler was making the U.S. title mean something against Swagger. Again, then Swagger and Ryder had it. Now it really doesn't mean anything again. Um, well, the IC title has meant quite a bit with Cody Rhodes being the Intercontinental Champion. I don't know what they're going to do with Big Show, but hopefully he continues on having the belt mean something. We'll say. As far as who's the most underused or misused, um, there's a lot of guys that are not used properly or misused um, at all. Um, Santino is so great as a wrestler. He could be so much better. Um, Jack Swagger, you know, former world champion, you know, being made to be, you know, Dolph Ziggler's little, you know, butt buddy for all intents and purposes. Dolph Ziggler's being misused again. He's the former World Heavyweight Champion, great Intercontinental U.S. Champion, and they're dropping him out big time, in my opinion. The Miz is just now getting back on track. Josh Green, do you think the Cena Dwayne match was worth the year-long hype? Well, today we gave the fans a big F, a middle finger in the face, the lackluster match, and Dwayne's refusal to pass the torch ending. On one hand, it brought a lot of mainstream media attention. On the other hand, the match itself and ending was a big F U to the guys in the back and lifelong fans. Um, I disagree. You know, it's going to surprise a lot of people after my attitude last night. But, um, Dwayne winning, if they do it right, will be beneficial to John, will be beneficial to the WWE, will be beneficial to the WWE Universe. Um, it really depends on what John does tonight and what he does in the next couple weeks, whether they turn him or not. Uh, Scott... John again. Last night's decision to put over the rock, the worst decision ever? No. Um, no. There's been many decisions that have been far worse in WWE history than the rock going over on John Cena. Dylan Lyles. Jeff, there's word with Roman that WWE has signed Brock Lesnar. Even in rumors that are beginning, he's going to face the Undertaker next year's WrestleMania. With the announcement of WrestleMania 29 tonight, wouldn't that idea ruin last night's Hell in a Cell match? I believe so. Undertaker is done. I still say that. I will say that, you know, until I see otherwise. But I think Undertaker is going to be done. How can you top last night? How can you even dream of topping that unbelievable match, an unbelievable finish last night? Can't do it. Can't be done. So I don't think Undertaker will face anybody ever again. 
Ken Carrick, uh, Jeff White. Is the Miz 3 0 WrestleMania or is he 3 and 2 because he lost a tag match with Jomo and he lost a Battle Royal? But those, those are both dark matches. So is everybody not counting those? Dark matches don't count. They were not on the WrestleMania card itself. They were on the dark match prior to the show. Aaron will argue with that when the day I die. Aaron Austin, Double A, will be arguing with that until the day I die. But not part of WrestleMania, so not on the show. Doesn't count. He is 3 0. Max Scott, now that Mania is over, do you think we will see the return of the A Train or Tenzai? If so, do you think he will get a big push? He has become a bit of a big deal in Japan, and I really hope that they won't get lost in the mid card action again. This could bring a lot of public rep for WWE in Japan, too, I bet. What do you think? Thanks, Jeff. Give up the fun wrestling show. Um, yeah. Uh, Lord Tenzai, the A Train, Big Bernard. Um, will hopefully be able to continue his role that he produced in Japan and do awesome things. Um, and the carryover momentum that he's had in Japan, because he's awesome. I never really disliked Albert. I disliked the whole shave the back gimmick. That was kind of stupid, but, um, I think Albert has a lot of potential, and he showed he has a lot of potential when he's in Japan, so he can only do good things if they do it right. With Laurinaitis, this is from Joe Barton. From with Laurinaitis era pass on bullshit shows now, what do you think the, the quality of the product will be? I have a feeling that a new corporation alliance will form with Lord Tenzai, Brock, Otunga, Mark Henry, etc. What are your thoughts? Um, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, I like to see John Laurinaitis do a whole corporate angle and have guys with him. Uh, I heard talk about saying that John Cena was going to be part of the corporation now with the heel turn. I hope not, God Almighty. Lorna Ice would be a great general manager for both shows. He would be a great dictator, no question. Question is from the WWE Attic. Do you think Wade Barrett should win his first world championship in the United Kingdom, and do you think it would WWE excuse to do a pay-per-view there? Um, it'd be cool. I'd like to see that. Um... Wade Barrett winning the championship in England would be awesome. Regal shut down on the right, truth be told. But if they're going to do it with Wade Barrett, do it in England. Get a big pop over there, sure. Rabbit Pit 189, two part question. If Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar were to ever face off in the Roman MMA, who do you think, do you think there would be a finish or do you think it would go to a decision? Decision. Those two guys would definitely go to a judge's decision. Those two guys would just, no gift either way. Do you think that their bout would be wild the MMA audience as their matches did the audience as a pro since circa 2003? Yes. If those guys were actually able to turn out loose MMA style, they would wow a lot of people. No question about that. Flim Fat Boy, do you think if John Cena was to turn heel, that it would be a great opportunity for CM Punk to become the top guy and have SummerSlam main event? Could you imagine heel Cena versus Punk, a Stone Cold-esque persona face? We've seen Punk and Cena at SummerSlam. I'm over that. Don't need to see that again. Cena versus somebody big at SummerSlam would need to be happening, like maybe The Rock again. Um, but we'll see. What was your favorite Goldberg match? The one where Goldberg wasn't involved. That's from Bad Axe Entertainment. This is from Joshman8200. Jeff, I love your show, but what's your beef with Josh Matthews? I think he's really good. He knows his history. He knows the moves. And him and Stryker are really good together. And even him and the King were good in the brief time they were together. He's an asshole. He's a douchebag. He's a jerk. And he just, he's not nice. Simple as that. WWE Anime fans, what states has WrestleMania never go to and should go to? Jeff for DX membership. <laughs> How about that. Um, um, Oregon would be awesome because Portland always has a good history up there. Um, Georgia, no, they did Georgia Dome. Um, that's really it. The big, big states have got WrestleMania already, I believe. What's that? Colorado. Colorado would be a good one. I mean, it's a little hard to wrestle in Colorado because of the altitude. But, North Carolina? You know, North Carolina would be good. Charlotte? You know. Raleigh. 
Raleigh, North Carolina, you know, those, those, you know, the, the Carolinas would be good. Yeah. There's a few states that could do it still. St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. Um, if done right, because St. Louis has been in wrestling town. Harley Race territory. Harley Race territory. There you go. The, the NWA is home for a long time. Go work. All right, Andrew Duggan. Um, who would I get rid of? Let me. Uh, I'd honestly get rid of. I don't know, people are gonna be pissed off at me because they only they like Santino. But if they don't change Santino's gimmick, they need to get rid of him. Same with Zach. Same with you know a lot of the, you know. Um, I honestly really wouldn't get rid of anybody. I, I like these guys. They need to bring in more guys from Japan. More guys from Mexico, more guys from the United Kingdom. They need to bring in talent that we have not seen. We've seen these same guys over and over and over and over and over again. We need to have new talent. I wouldn't really get rid of anybody, Andrew. I would just definitely increase the roster and increase visibility of guys that we had not seen. Bring the guys up from Florida. Bring the guys in from TNA that don't have a job anymore. Bring the guys in from Ring of Honor that need to be showcased properly. But as far as firing guys, it really would depend on who they brought in and who needed to be replaced. I know it wasn't the big thing that I you know, promised with the whole big, you know, I'm going to address this question next week and give you full attention. But that, that's really what it is. I really wouldn't fire anybody at this point because every guy has proven himself to be pretty useful. But... They need to bring in more guys to showcase a different array of talent. All right. Where's my little bucket of tricks? Where did the kids put it? Don't know. Oh, yeah. I have one more question. Thank you. Lisa, our buddy Lisa, asked, um, how do you think the outcome of WrestleMania will um, affect the mentality of those involved? Well, if the Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Undertaker situation is any indication, dear Lisa, um... They are going to be in serious emotional mode for the next couple of days because, my God, that match just blew everybody away. I, I said it last night, I was bawling like a baby after that match was over. Um, the whole John Cena rock dynamic will definitely play in tonight's show, I'm sure. You know, with John coming out there and, you know, doing a little bit of heel tendencies at the end with that attempt of the people's elbow and the very arrogant look on his face when he did it. Um... And John Laurinaitis and him being in charge of both shows will definitely be a huge impact, a huge shift in the power of WWE management. So I, for one, cannot wait to see what happens. You know, where it all begins again is always WrestleMania. So I cannot wait for tonight's Raw and beyond. All right, I have here in my in my little grubby hand a bucket with with names, not predetermined picks. These are actually written down on these pieces of paper of who I'm going to have as the next book of the month for April. Didn't start yesterday. That's our bad. We got busy WrestleMania. Things happen around here. But starting today, start reading this book, y'all. All right, I'll even put the event page up later on today. All right. Got it in my hand. Aha! Ric Flair. To be the man. Woo! Ric Flair's book is this month's book. You've all read it a hundred times. If you haven't, you should have by now. I know I have. So, Ric Flair will be the book starting today. Read the book. And on Dads, barring some major catastrophic life-changing event on Raw, we will review Adam Copeland on Edge this week on Dads on Wrestling. For now, I'm Jeff Meacham. This has been After the Bell. Thank you all for watching. See you next week.